So I um, am with the North Carolina Department of Commerce, and um, I report to Secretary Keith Crisco. And um, we work um, to help the state be a globally engaged state, because you know that's important to the, to the success of our state, uh, to job creation, to job growth for college kids like you. And so that's what we work on every day. OK. And so our division is very entrepreneurial. And every day, we are out meeting with North Carolina companies, talking to them about the, their, their opportunities and their challenges, and helping them understand um, that global international sales are what's going to help them grow. And we've certainly seen during this tough economic time that the companies that we work with that have international sales have grown uh, and survived this tough time. And so it's just something that's really important. And we have a wide export team here in North Carolina. So it's not just my staff. We, we work really closely with our partners to bring all the resources that exist in the state um, to bear on companies and what they're trying to do. And so again, you know, our idea is export success, helping companies um, sell globally and, and create jobs through international sales. So North Carolina is a very active international state. If you can imagine, we're a state of 9.5 million people, almost 10 million these days, but we export $27 billion worth of product around the world. And I always say thank to my staff that last year we exported $2 billion more uh, products and services. And so, you know, people always ask, you know, what, what are we exporting? And here's just some of them. C chemicals. So what, what's chemicals is things like um, um, pharmaceutical products and uh, raw chemicals for production, uh, manufacturing production. Machinery. Um, believe it or not, we still export a lot of textile machinery around the world. Um, interestingly enough, that's one of our fortes. Um, transportation equipment. We're shipping um, buses, aerospace parts, um, uh, uh, all different kinds of uh, auto parts. So transportation equipment is our number three export. Computers and electronics, a lot going on there, as you can imagine, with electronic parts and computers. Textiles. Um, I was telling a story earlier. Uh, two years ago, we opened up a new shipping line between the Port of Wilmington and the Port of Cortez in Honduras. And now we're shipping more North Carolina yarn and thread to Central America than we are to China, which surprises people. So again, still lots of opportunity for traditional industries in our uh, state um, and lots of other things. Food is a big one, you can imagine. We produce a lot of, um, uh, of chicken, pork, soybeans, cotton, um, sweet potatoes, uh, all around the world. So food's another really important thing. And our agri department does really interesting things. So for example, um, in Europe, they'll bring a North Carolina chef around to the big food shows and show the Europeans how to prepare sweet potatoes in lots of different ways. So they think, oh, this is an interesting new food. And so now you'll see sweet potatoes on menus in restaurants in Paris, which is pretty cool. Um, when you're in Japan and you eat yakitori, the um, fried pork on a stick, that's most likely North Carolina pork. The Japanese love our quality pork from here, so it's pretty interesting. OK, and so people want to know who are our trading partners. You know, Canada remains number one. It's a huge market for us. And so oftentimes, when North Carolina companies come to us and say, hey, I read about Brazil or China on the front page of The Economist. I want to go there. We say, let's start with Canada. Okay, We'll get some French labels in your product. We'll figure out how to ship it. We'll just make a start there. Also, uh, with Mexico, obviously, things that go uh, in, in, within NAFTA go duty free. It's much easier to, to, to do. And so that's usually where we start. Now, you'll see some interesting things here. China jumping up to number two for us is a big deal. Um, you know, Again, I've been talking a little bit today about this. Um, for many years, um, you know, we were afraid of China. Uh, when I would go out and have conversations about international trade across the state, people would say, the Chinese are going to take our jobs. I don't want to do with them. We should close down the borders. Uh, but now, the reality is that our trade to China in the last 10 years have increased 600%. So it's a huge jump. So the reality is that our small, medium, and large-sized companies are finding opportunity in China. The Chinese want American products. They want quality. I mean, they feel the same way about their kids that we do about our kids. They don't want their kids to be eating a, a toy that's got lead paint on it or drinking milk that's got melamine in it. They want quality products as well. And so, again, as their um, society um, matures 
and their spending power increases, they have the same um, wants and wishes and aspirations for their families that we all do. And so that's why it's a perfect uh, partner for us. And so uh, China is a really important market for us. Um, again, Honduras has jumped up to number six, and that's because of our shipping route, where we're shipping lots now into Honduras that get spread out uh, throughout Central and South America. And then the other interesting point on here is Brazil. You know, Brazil is a really inter interesting trading partner for us. Um, Brazil, for many years, has been very protectionist, so lots of tariffs and non-tariff barriers that haven't allowed U.S. products to get into that market. But now, again, with the growing middle class in Brazil, people with money that have, you know, want American jeans and American cars and American computers, um, we've found ways to, um, to, to crack that market and enter that market. So that's been a, a great thing for us, and it's jumped up to number 10. So our job is to facilitate exports, so to help companies uh, export more. And how do we do that? So here are some of the services that we provide. So for example, um, preparing marketing plans and distribution searches. So when companies uh, decide, I, you know, uh, I've got an order from Germany and I think that should be a market that I should be exporting more to, we, we try to um, you know, say to them, let's do some uh, research. Let's figure out which is your best market. Uh, let's uh, do some market research and then let's develop a marketing plan because you guys can imagine, you know, small and medium-sized companies especially, you know, they're trying to worry about payroll and uh, contracts and, you know, all the things it takes to run a business. And while they have an interest in exporting, um, they often don't even know where to start. Or just as I mentioned before, it can be very reactive. So sometimes we'll go out to a company and we'll say, are you exporting? And they'll say, oh yeah, we have a website and we got an order from China yesterday and we shipped it to them. And I was like, okay, that's great. I wouldn't say that really sounds like a plan. You know, it's more just uh, is happening to us and we're trying to catch up with it. We're making them pay in advance. We're making them pay in U.S. dollars. And we say, okay, that's great, but let's really make it part of your business model and your plan. And that's where folks like you are going to be able to help these companies think through these things. Um, consulting on export operations. So again, you know, um, you know, getting a good lawyer, figuring out how you're going to get paid, um, all the operations, how are you going to ship your product, um, what, uh, what they call INCO terms, what shipping terms are you going to use when you sell to your client. So consulting on all those things. Um, best market prospects. Again, you know, a company might say, I've been reading a lot about Brazil, I think it would be a great market for us. And our folks in our overseas office can really say, you know what, I've evaluated your product and truthfully, it's just not something that would sell in Brazil because we already have a deep domestic uh, producer for that or it's not part of the Brazilian lifestyle to eat that or wear that. And so um, helping understand which are the best markets around the world. Advising on finance and insurance options. So we work closely, for example, with the XM Bank and that is the federal bank that provides funding to exporters. And there are things like credit insurance. So for example, um, you're a North Carolina company, you get an order for a million dollars from a company in China and you say, I really want to sell this, but I'm not so sure that this company is going to be able to pay. I don't know them well. I've only talked to them on the phone. I met them at a trade show. And so for example, through the XM Bank, you can buy a very low cost insurance policy that says um, the US government will vet that overseas buyer they will sell you insurance and should that buyer not pay you the North Carolina company, the government will go after that company and the gov U.S. government will pay you for that order. So uh, they, they call it the um, I can sleep at night insurance policy because you're getting paid. So there's lots of good opportunities like that for, for exporting, um, for financing capital to, um, to produce your inventory to sell overseas. So there's lots of partners that we use that help companies with that because certainly when we're out with clients these days, just like all of you, you know, they're struggling to make ends meet and get financing to, to um, support their companies. And then finding customers and partners overseas. So um, I mentioned earlier that we do trade shows all around the world and that really is the way for most North Carolina companies that they can get out into the market, walk the floor, see what their competitors are doing, see what pricing's like, um, talk to the government about the regulations, that sort of thing. So uh, we work really hard to help find those customers and partners. And we also do um, the, the opposite in the sense that um, we get a lot of trade leads. So uh, last week we got a call from our Mexico City office and it was from 
um, our person there, Laura, who is working with one of the big, big biggest utility companies in uh, Mexico. And they said, uh, we're coming to the end of our budget year. Uh, we need some specific products. And what do you have in North Carolina? And so they basically gave us our wish list on smart grid, grid products, on efficiency products, on meters. And we were able to identify 20 North Carolina companies that had products that would meet those needs and then get those companies hooked up. So we do as much as we can for that kind of matchmaking to help create markets for our, our company's uh, uh, products. And then some of these other things uh, uh, down at the bottom, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but our road show. So our eight offices overseas, once a year, these folks come into North Carolina. And we travel across the state in a bus, all of us, and um, meet with clients one-on-one -on -one, and then have lunch and learn sessions. So it's a great opportunity for you know, a company, that, for example, that has an interest in China but isn't quite sure. They can sit down one-on-one -on -one with our person um, from Shanghai here and say, here's my product, explain it, what do you think, what are the opportunities, who do you know? So it's really a great opportunity for, um, to bring, bring the world to us here in North Carolina. And then we have a bunch of different uh, training programs. So um, the way that we work our export training programs is in a three-phase way. So if you're a company that's new to export, we usually funnel you through our export eye-opener program. And that's, you know, we've got people that make, uh, you know, uh, there's a woman that makes the best pound cake you've ever had and exports it to many places. So, so the smaller companies uh, come through this export eye-opener just to understand what would it take, you know, is this a possibility, and just people that have some curiosity. Because we know that if we start training companies early on, that they might not be ready to export today, but a year down the road or two years down the road, they're going to feel a lot more confident about making those international sales if they've had some education. And then we have Export University that we do with our U.S. Department of uh, Commerce colleagues. And that is more of an in-depth program. It can be either a two-day program or a one-day a week for six weeks. And that gets more into export finance, what data sources to use to find good uh, data on your markets, um, you know, um, how to build your website to attract international buyers. So lots of interesting things there. And then the last thing we do is called Export Tech. And that is a really in-depth three-month program for companies that are already exporting perhaps to one market but want to reach new markets. And when they finish that Export Tech program, they have a thick uh, data, data analysis and international strategy and marketing plan that they're really ready to execute. So it's a much more, for much more uh, uh, in-depth and um, mature companies. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Germany because I know that many of you are in, in um, German le classes here, and um, I really thought it was fantastic. When I came out of college, um, I have to admit that you know I really knew more than I needed to know about French literature and nothing about how to speak uh, French, business French. Uh, that was the truth. And so um, you know, Germany is a very important market to us. Uh, it has remained a bright spot in Europe for us in terms of investment and trade. And so, um, you know, we've got lots going on there. Chemicals, machinery, transportation equipment, computer and electronic products. You know, I think it's so interesting when you think about um, renewable energy in Europe. We actually have North Carolina companies that are shipping different renewable energy uh, products to Germany because um, they've got such a strong market for that. So there's a lot going on in Germany. And I think that, um, you know, we uh, have a lot of German companies that set up shop here in North Carolina. And I've got a list, list of those I'm going to read to you later. Um, but I think that really an important part of this is um, Europeans, and Germans in, sp in particular, really do have, um, find it very important for people to have German language skills. It's very important to Germans. I wouldn't say it's the same for other European um, uh, countries. But Germans very much want that you have language skills. And they also want you to have an understanding of German culture in terms of business. They have expectations that you will understand uh, how the Germans like to do business, how they conduct themselves in a business setting. And so I really think that you, know, you guys having those skills and those language skills are really going to set you apart from others. So uh, uh, I, think it's, I think it's wonderful you guys are, are doing that.